Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. We're back for part two of making a dragon bonsai pot. I left the dragon covered in plastic overnight. So let's get it out and begin work today. Oh, it's nice and damp. So yesterday I added the feet on the bottom and I wasn't thinking, I was thinking like the head coming out the front and the two feet. I wasn't thinking and apparently I put this leg on backwards. It should face the other direction. So thanks everyone in the comments who pointed that out. I wouldn't have even thought of, oh, and I just realized my jaw dropped off here. Holy, look at that. Okay, well that's something that has to be fixed. I wonder why that happened. I guess it maybe it dried out too much. Oh dear, that's not good. I wonder why that happened. I guess the material was folded or something there. Well, it's a good thing that happened now and not far into the future. So I'll have to reattach that. Anyway, so I've got to move this foot around. It's still very soft. I'll keep this all sprayed. It's just broken half again. Oh my goodness. Well, it's good that happened now. That's all I can say. Because if it happened during firing, well, you'd have a dragon with half a jaw. So here is a look at the work I have to do today. Oh, even my tooth came off there. That one came off. I guess I have to be really careful with my seams. I don't even think I had a seam here. I'm not sure why it cracked. However, we'll fix that. And then I've got to move this foot around. Which, let's see if I can get it off right now. So here I go. I'm going to try just tearing it off. So that was a pretty good uh, joint. And then I've got to move it around so it'll look like this. Now, how does that look from the front? Well, it looks a little strange to me having the one foot pointing backwards, but that's the anatomy. <laughs> Can't argue with anatomy. So I will, uh, I'm going to soften this clay up on this side using my water bottle. And I will score it. And hopefully, it'll stay firmly attached. Like that. And then this one is still quite scored up. Oh, I don't know. This clay is a little harder. I probably should have taken some slip home with me. Slip is like the... the uh, thin clay that you put for making joints. But if I push this really firmly in here, like really, really firmly, it should, it should become one with the body. And then I'll want to angle the foot out just a bit so you can see it from the front. Yeah, that looks really bizarre having it backwards to me. So I want to make sure this is nice and strong and it's attached properly. I don't want a repeat of the jaw here. Okay, that seems to be pretty good. It is one with the body. There was a lot of talk online about how many toes on the dragon and I went with three because, you know, that's what I see with a T-Rex, chicken feet and why go super complex when you can keep it a little simpler. I guess it is visible through here. Not the greatest though. Why 
why that jaw just went though. Just like popped off from the tongue. It's odd because I really scored the tongue. It broke. It broke midway in the tongue too. You can see the the tongue where I attached it is still in there. It just sheared off. Maybe it's a characteristic of the clay or something or the way it was formed, made. But that definitely has to be reattached. So I will wet it, score it, and try and attach the tongue back on. And the clay still is quite moist in the tongue area here. Maybe the tip dried out faster than the base and it just decided, no way, I'm not staying attached. So now I'm pushing the tongue in, merging the tip with the base, making sure it's a good solid joint. It is still very soft, the clay, on the lower mouth area. Like down here is very soft. Because if you think of the water, it starts at the top and the water is going to migrate downwards. So everything on the top of the dragon is going to dry out quicker and everything at the bottom here is going to stay very, very soft. So I'll reattach the jaw. That's kind of like what I want the tail of the dragon to look like. Maybe that would be better like a diamond shape instead of the point. I kind of like that. And then the middle round part just fading away. I will think about that. That's a... You never know where you get your inspiration from. A tool. Okay. Now, I think... Okay, let's try it. Let's try reattaching the jaw here. And it could be that because I didn't have a support under the mouth here that it, it sagged overnight and then just sheared off. So I'm definitely going to put a support underneath the mouth here as it's drying because it's probably put a lot of stress on that area. I don't know that I'm worried about this staying attached now. Very, very worried. Because this clay is fairly hard now. And to get it to join properly, I mean, I can see it's not really joining. I will try and kind of merge the two clays. This might be a little messy. I'll have to redo the whole mouth area, but. It's better to get a good joint than try and worry about preserving what you have, the details on that. Yeah, I think that's what it was. I think it needed a support underneath the head, underneath the jaw here. It just was too much hanging weight there. So I'm trying to mix these two materials the best I can. Kind of folding them into each other. All my teeth are falling off. The beard fell off, tooth's fallen out. Oh my goodness, this is just a disaster. Now I'm very, very worried about firing this. Well, I guess once it dries out, it'll be, you know, drying out for a month, maybe a month and a half, at least. And if it survives the drying out, I think the firing, you know, unless you have any big air bubbles in the clay, the firing should go okay. And Isabella says she does like a 24 hour low fire to totally remove any moisture out of the clay. So I think that's feeling pretty good, the jaw now. It's. There's still a slight difference in flex between the new part and the old part. It's flexing on the joint there, but... 
that's the best I can do. Now I'm going to put a support underneath here. I've got a lump of this old clay here. There's my teeth there and the beard. So I'll put that under there and hopefully this will help the situation. I hope. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. Okay. Uh, so the foot's fixed. It's in the right direction, even though it looks weird to me. It looks very, very strange, but... And the teeth, they were kind of connected a bit, so maybe when the jaw sagged, it pulled the teeth off with it. That's my theory. I don't think the teeth just fell off all by themselves. I think it was something to do with the physics of sagging. Okay, tooth number two is coming in there. And the tooth, the teeth were also kind of attached to the tongue. They were supporting it each side, so maybe that also caused the tongue to come off. I don't know. I'm making up theories. Something happened. Now, I, um, oh, I'm still missing teeth. What happened to them? There's supposed to be one up here. There's supposed to be part of the beard down here, and I just, I don't have any material. Well, we'll get some new stuff. I'll pinch off a little bit. Make some new pieces. Okay, I think that tooth is implanted. Stay together. No falling apart this time. So I'm going to let all these pieces uh, harden up a bit before I start working them. And I think I'm going to spray it, put the plastic back on, and let it sit for a bit just so the pieces kind of uh, merge with each other. I don't know if that makes sense, but I hope it does. So here I go. I'm going to spray it down. And cover it up and just let it sit for you know maybe half an hour it'll sort of um, I don't know the moisture levels will even out I think that's what I'm saying is that you know water will transfer it goes to the driest areas so if that one area is wet and the other area is dry the water will migrate to the dry area Okay, so we'll let that sit for a bit and come back. Over here in the garden, there is a gopher eating our milkweed. And he doesn't seem very afraid of me. Hello, fella. Hello, how are you? There he is, if you can see him down there. Hello, fella. You're eating the milkweed. I don't think Laura will like that. I'm pretty sure she won't like that. Pretty sure she doesn't want that, eh? I don't mind if you eat the weeds, but not the milkweed. The monarchs need that. Hey, the monarchs need that milkweed. So there's our gopher. The groundhog. What do you think? Are you gonna still eat? Yeah, that one's a weed. You can eat that, okay? That you can eat that one. Oh, he he he's getting a little shy. Are you? Are you getting a little shy? Yeah. Okay. See you later. <laughs> I think Laura will like that footage of the gopher. I've left the dragon sit for maybe 15, 20 minutes. Let's get back to work. I'm thinking underneath the lower jaw. I need to put like a throat and that'll reinforce it, make it a little thicker, hopefully avoiding it uh, drooping and cracking. I think that was my problem. So I'll do that. I'll add a strip underneath that'll reinforce it all and keep my fingers crossed and hopefully that'll solve my problems. I'll unwrap the dragon. I've got full sun in here now, so I'm going to have to be very careful to keep it hydrated. It is humid here in the greenhouse, so.
Yeah, so I think adding a strip right from the neck right out to the jaw, kind of a narrow one, like a throat area. So I'll, I'll roll out a piece. I got a piece of fresh clay. Make sure it's well molded like that. And I'll add it thick and then I can carve it away to make it a little more elegant. So I'm going to have to remove all these uh, these uh, supports. So here I go. Oh, there comes one of my tooth is coming off again, or my beard. And remove the one underneath the head here. Okay. Like that. And then I'll add this piece underneath here. So this is really strengthening the head up. I can feel there's no flex in it now. So as the clay hardens here, I can carve this away, making it thin. And I think it's going to work very well. As long as my pieces are integrated well into the existing parts, so I'll have a lot of carving to do here, but that's good. As long as it doesn't flex, I'll be very, very happy. So I was looking at the tail, and I mentioned I like the shape of this tool. It's sort of diamond-shaped. I think that would be a better tail for this dragon rather than this spear shape. So I'm going to cut off this section like that and cut off this section. Which is... And I think that looks better. I, I like that shape tail. Well, um, I think <laughs> I'm back to shaping these fins on the top. I've got, you know, the ones at the start here are quite nice, but the ones back here still need a lot of work. They're quite thick. Now the fins do get larger as it gets down the body, so they will get a little thicker, but I don't want them like heavy looking on the top here, so I've got to carve some of that clay away. Okay, I think the fins along the back are roughed in quite nicely. I still have to do some in the tail here, but I've got from the head all the way around here, so I just need to finish the tail here. And they're, they're not too bad, but some of these ones out front are a little, a little funny looking. So I don't know if I got that on camera, but the tail fell off. It cracked through here, so I've added a lot of reinforcing underneath the tail really integrating it in with the existing clay just like the head so it's good and solid and then as the clay hardens I can carve it away and make it look a little more pleasing to the eye but the important thing is to get support under all these pieces so I've got everything back to normal now I fixed the foot the right direction. I've reattached everything that's fallen off. I've reinforced everything. So I'm hoping I have no more disasters. I've had enough today. So I still have a lot of carving to do. If you look at these fins, I've got to shape them better. Now I'm wondering if I should start adding some scale detail and see how it looks. I think I should try it. So on the back here I want smaller scales and then underneath will be the ribs. 
that run right underneath. So I've got three tools here. They all, these are from Isabella. They all have, they're like a cylinder that's been cut off on an angle. So I'm wondering what size. Small would be a pretty good size. Medium. I'm thinking medium. I think small, if I did small, it would look very, very detailed, but I think it would take me four or five days to do the scales, is what I'm thinking. So I'm going to try the medium. If I don't like it, well, I don't like it. And I should try it on a spot that's not quite so visible. Maybe, I don't know, maybe back here. So here I go. So the theory is you dig the tool in and then you lift up and that makes a scale. I'm going to try it actually on a piece of a test piece because I haven't done this before and I want to see how it works. So here's a test piece. And so if I let me just smooth it out. So if I dig in like this, lift up, dig in, lift up, dig in, lift up, dig in, lift up. So I'm trying out some different patterns, random here. So I think that works pretty good. I think that's a good texture. And the size, let's just see. It's quite rough. Let me try the fine one and just see what that looks like. See, that one broke off, that's not good. So I have to be careful not to go too deep I've got to get that out. Yeah, so if it breaks off, I might be in trouble. So maybe I've got to kind of watch my depth. Maybe it would just gripped onto the uh, the tool. I, I I flicked that accidentally. Now. Yeah, I think the medium size is best. The small size, I think I'm going to run into trouble. So I'll put this test piece back in the bag here, keep it soft, and try this for real now. So I think keeping the tool wet will help, keeping the surface wet. Here I go. I don't know where to start even here. Is that enough? Maybe that's not lifted out enough. I think that's working. I think the size is pretty good. It looks good from this view where you get the shadow. I think it's good. I, I don't want like overly textured. So I think this is looking good. And maybe the fine scales could be on the head. 
So that's looking very dragon-like. That's a good technique. I'm glad Isabella developed this technique because it would be a very difficult thing to come up with by myself. I, would, I don't know how I would do these scales otherwise. Okay, so let me just look at it. I think it's looking quite good. Now, on the legs, do I keep the same scale size or do I change it? It's a good question. Maybe I better leave the legs because I'm not really done sculpting them. I've got to add like all kinds of texture and stuff to it. So I, I will leave definitely leave the legs. But yeah, I think the scales look really, really good. Very nice, in fact. Okay, um, now I was going to texture something different at the base of these upright fins. I was going to put like a, a ridge or something. So, what do I do for that? Maybe I get the fine one and I use the fine one up here. I think I'll try that. I gotta be careful I don't mess up. Yeah, the fine ones are looking quite nice up here. Now, what am I going to do on the fins? I need some kind of a texture. Let me try it. If it works, it works. If it doesn't... Well, they're there. And then I think I would come in with my tool and I would define the area, joining up a line. Maybe like that. And then ah, tough to do. And then recess underneath it. So it's like a center spline that looks pretty nice I like that that's a very nice looking fin and you know once it gets highlighted with the iron oxide it's going to look it'll bring out all that texture So there it is. Yeah, that looks really nice. I like that. It really brings life to that fin. Now, do I need any texture in this area? I don't think I do. Here's a look at the scales in the light. I think that's pretty cool. I think it's a good effect. Okay. So I'll continue doing all these fins on the top before I do the scales because that way I can avoid touching them with my hands. I've completed the carving of the top fins on this side of the dragon. So you can see it's looking quite nice, I think. I haven't really detailed these ones yet because they're still very soft. I'm going to wait till they harden up a bit. Yeah, so that's where the dragon's at. So I'm going to continue going around now on the other side, on the inside here, carving the fins away. The lighting did improve and I was able to get those back fins quite nicely. I, um, I'm going to leave it here for tonight. So I made some progress today. Uh, there were a lot of setbacks, but I mean, as I said, I'd rather crack now than later. So there it is. It's all of these fins are kind of roughed in. I tried the scale texture out. It works quite nice. Fix my back foot the right direction. I've got more support under the model. So yeah, I hope uh, I hope I don't find any surprises tomorrow when I begin work on it once again. That concludes part two of this series. 
I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone.